Chapter 10 Microbes in Human Welfare Besides microscopic plants and animals, microbes are the major components of biological systems on this earth. You have studied about the diversity of living organisms in class 11. Do you remember which kingdoms among the living organism contain microorganisms? Which are the ones that are only microscopic? Microbes are present everywhere. In soil, water, air, inside our bodies and that of other animals and plants. They are present even at sites where no other life form could possibly exist. Sites such as deep inside the geysers, thermal vents, where the temperature may be as high as 100 degrees Celsius. Deep in the soil, under the layers of snow, several meters thick and in highly acidic environments. Microbes are diverse protozoa, bacteria, fungi and microscopic animal and plant viruses, viroids and also prions that are proteinaceous, infectious agents. Some of the microbes are shown in figure 10.1 and 10.2. Microbes like bacteria and many fungi can be grown on nutritive media to form colonies. That can be seen with naked eyes. Such cultures are useful in studies on microorganisms. So here you can see the diagram. Uh, these diagrams are important as questions may be asked. So just go through the diagram uh, that rod shaped bacteria, coca and all. So you just go through it. In chapter 8, you have read that microbes cause a large number of diseases in human beings. They also cause diseases in animals and plants. But this should not make you think that all microbes are harmful. Several microbes are useful to man in diverse ways. Some of the most important contribution of microbes to human welfare are discussed in this chapter. Microbes in household products You would be surprised to know that we use microbes or products derived from them every day. A common example is the production of curd from milk. Microorganisms such as lactobacillus and other commonly called lactic acid bacteria lab grow in milk and convert it to curd. During growth, the lab produce acids that coagulate and partially digest the milk proteins. A small amount of curd added to the fresh milk is an inoculum or starter contain millions of lab which at suitable temperatures multiply, thus converting milk to curd which also improves its nutritional quality by increasing vitamin B12. In our stomach too, the lab play very beneficial role in checking disease-causing microbes. The dough, which is used for making foods such as dosa and idli, is also fermented by bacteria. The puffed-up appearance of dough is due to the production of carbon dioxide gas. Can you tell which metabolic pathway is taking place resulting in the formation of CO2? That is fermentation. Where do you think the bacteria for these fermentation come from? It is added, right? Similarly, the dough which is used for making bread is fermented using baker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. A number of traditional drinks and food are also made by fermentation by the microbes. Thirdly, a traditional drink of some parts of southern India is made by fermenting sap from palms. Microbes are also used to ferment fish, soya bean and bamboo shoots to make foods. Cheese is one of the oldest food items in which microbes were used. Different varieties of cheese are known by their characteristic texture, flavor and taste. The specificity coming from the microbes used. For example, the large hole in Swiss cheese are due to production of large amount of carbon dioxide by a bacterium named Propionibacterium sharmani. The Roquefort cheese are ripened by growing a specific fungi on them which gives them a particular flavor. Microbes in industrial products Even in industry, microbes are used to synthesize a number of products valuable to human beings. Beverages and antibiotics are some examples. Production on industrial scale requires growing microbes in very large vessels called fermenters. Fermented beverages 
microbes especially yeast have been used from time immemorial for the production of beverages like wine beer whiskey brandy or rum for this purpose the same yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae used for bread making and commonly called brewers yeast is used for fermenting malted cereals and fruit juices to produce ethanol Do you recollect the metabolic reactions which result in the production of ethanol by yeast? Depending on the type of raw material used for fermentation and the type of processing with or without distillation, different types of alcoholic drinks are obtained. Wine and beer are produced without distillation, whereas whiskey brandy and rum are produced by distillation of the fermented broth the photograph of a fermentation plant is shown in figure 10.5 antibiotics antibiotics produced by microbes are regarded as one of the most significant discoveries of the 20th century and have greatly contributed towards the welfare of the human society Anti is a Greek word that means against and bio means life together they mean against life in the context of disease causing organism whereas with a reference to human beings they are pro life and not against antibiotics are similar antibiotics are chemical substances which are produced by some microbes and can kill or retard the growth of other disease causing microbes You are familiar with the commonly used antibiotic penicillin. Do you know that penicillin was the first antibiotic to be discovered and it was a chance discovery. Alexander Fleming while working on staphylococci bacteria once observed a mold growing in one of his unwashed culture plates around which staphylococci could not grow. He found out that it was due to chemical produced by the mold and he named it penicillin after the mold penicillium notatum. However, its full potential as an effective antibiotic was established much later by Ernst Chain and Howard Florin. The this antibiotic was extensively used to treat American soldiers wounded in World War 2. Fleming Chain and Flory were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for this discovery. After penicillin, other antibiotics were also purified from other microbes. Can you name some other antibiotics and found, find out their sources? Antibiotics have greatly improved our capacity to treat deadly diseases such as plague, whooping cough, kali khasi, diphtheria. galgotu and leprosy kushta rog which used to kill millions all over the globe today we cannot imagine a world without antibiotics chemicals enzymes and other bioactive molecules microbes are also used for commercial and industrial production of certain chemicals like organic acids alcohols and enzyme example of acid producers are Aspergillus niger a fungus of citric acid Acetobacter aceti a bacterium of acetic acid Clostridium butylicum a bacterium of butyric acid and Lactobacillus a bacterium of lactic acid Yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used for commercial production of ethanol Microbes are also used for production of enzymes. Lipases are used in detergent formulations and are helpful in removing oily stains from the laundry. You must have noticed that bottled fruit juices bought from the market are clearer as compared to those made at home. This is because the bottled juice are clarified by the use of pectinases and proteases. Streptokinase produced by the bacterium Streptococcus and modified by genetic engineering is used as a clot buster for removing clots from the blood vessels of patients who have undergone myocardial infarction leading to heart attack. Another bioactive molecule 
साइक्लोस्पोरिन ए दैट इज यूज एज एन इम्यूनोसप्रेसिव एजेंट इन ऑर्गैन ट्रांसप्लांट पेशेंट्स इज प्रोड्यूस बाय द फंगस ट्राइकोडर्मा पॉलीस्पोरम सो ट्राइकोडर्मा बिलोंग्स टू विच क्लास ऑफ फंगाई इफ एनीबडी कुड आंसर Statins produced by the yeast Monascus purpureus have been commercialized as blood cholesterol lowering agents. It acts by complete competitively inhibiting the enzyme responsible for synthesis of cholesterol. Microbes in sewage treatment. We know that large quantities of wastewater are generated every day in cities and towns. A major component of this wastewater is human excreta. This municipal waste water is also called sewage. It contains a large amount of organic matter and microbes, many of which are pathogenic. Have you ever wondered where this huge quantity of sewage or urban waste water is disposed of daily? This cannot be discharged into natural water bodies like rivers and streams directly. You can understand why. before disposal hence sewage is treated in sewage treatment plants stps to make it less polluting treatment of waste water is done by the heterotrophic microbes naturally present in the sewage this treatment is carried out in two stages primary treatment this treatment steps basically involve physical removal of particles large and small from the sewage through filtration and sedimentation these are removed in stages initially floating debris is removed by sequential filtration then the grit soil and small pebbles are removed by sedimentation all solids that settle form the primary sludge and the supernatant forms the effluent the effluent from the primary settling tank is taken for secondary treatment secondary treatment or biological treatment the primary effluent is passed into large aeration tanks where it is constantly agitated mechanically and air is pumped into it this allows vigorous growth of useful aerobic microbes into flocks masses of bacteria associated with fungal filaments to form mesh like structure while growing these microbes consume the major part of the organic matter in the effluent this significantly reduces the bod biochemical oxygen demand of the effluent bod refers to the amount of oxygen that would be consumed if all the organic matter in 1 liter of water were oxidized by bacteria the sewage water is treated till bod is reduced The BOD test measures the rate of uptake of oxygen by microorganisms in sample of water and thus indirectly BOD is a measure of organic matter present in the water. The greater the BOD of waste water more is its polluting potential. Once the BOD of the sewage or waste water is reduced significantly the effluent is then passed into a settling tank where the bacterial flocks are allowed to sediment this sediment is called activated sludge a small part of activated sludge is pumped back into the aeration tank to serve as the inoculum the remaining major part of the sludge is pumped into large tanks called anaerobic sludge digesters here other kinds of bacteria which grow anaerobically digest the bacteria and the fungi in the sludge during this digestion bacteria produce a mixture of gases such as methane hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide these gases form biogas and can be used as a source of energy as it is inflammable The effluent from the secondary treatment plant is generally released into natural water bodies like rivers and stream. An aerial view of such a plant is no, shown in figure 10.7. You can appreciate how microbes play a major role in treating millions of gallons of waste water every day across the globe. This methodology has been practiced for more than a century now in almost all parts of the world. till date no man made technology has been able to rival the microbial treatment of sewage 
you are aware that due to increasing urbanization sewage is being produced in much larger quantities than ever before however the number of sewage treatment plants has not increased enough to treat such large quantities so the untreated sewage is often discharged directly into rivers leading to their pollution and increase in water borne diseases The Ministry of Environment and Forest has initiated Ganga Action Plan and Yamuna Action Plan to save these major rivers of our country from pollution. Under these plans it is proposed to build a large number of sewage treatment plants so that only treated sewage may be discharged in the rivers. A visit to a sewage treatment plant situated in any place near you would be a very interesting and educating experience. Microbes in production of biogas. Biogas is a mixture of gases containing predominantly methane produced by the microbial activity and which may be used as a fuel. You have learned that microbes produce different types of gases and products during growth and metabolism. The type of gas produced depends upon the microbes and the organic substrates they utilize. In the example cited in relation to fermentation of dough, cheese making and production of beverages, the main gas produced was carbon dioxide. However, certain bacteria which grow anaerobically on cellulosic material produce large amount of methane along with carbon dioxide and H2. These bacteria are collectively called methanogens and one such common bacterium is methanobacterium. These bacteria are commonly found in the anaerobic sludge during sewage treatment. These bacteria are also present in the rumen, a part of stomach of cattle. A lot of cellulosic material present in the food of the cattle is also present in the rumen. In rumen these bacteria help in breakdown of cellulose and play an important role in nutrition of cattle do you think we human beings are able to digest the cellulose present in our foods thus the excreta dung of the cattle commonly called gobar is rich in these bacteria dung can be used for generation of biogas commonly called gobar gas The biogas plant consists of a concrete tank 10 to 15 feet deep in which bio waste are collected and a slurry of dung is fed. A floating cover is placed over the slurry which keeps on rising as the gas is produced in the tank due to the microbial activity. The biogas plant has an outlet which is connected to a pipe to supply biogas to nearby houses. The spent slurry is removed through another outlet and may be used as fertilizer. Cattle dung is available in large quantities in rural areas where cattle are used for a variety of purposes. So, biogas plant are more often built in rural areas. The biogas thus produced is used for cooking and lighting. The picture of a biogas plant is shown in figure 10.8. The technology of biogas production was developed in India mainly due to efforts of Indian Agriculture Agricultural Research Institute IARI and Khadi and Village Industries Commission KVIC. If your school is situated in a village or near a village, it would be very interesting to inquire if there are any biogas plants nearby. visit the biogas plant and learn more about it from the people who are actually managing it microbes as biocontrol agents biocontrol refers to the use of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests in modern society these problems have been tackled incre- uh, tackled increasingly by use of chemicals by use of in, in insecticides and pesticides these chemicals are toxic and extremely harmful to human beings and animals alike and have been polluting our environment soil groundwater fruits vegetables and crop plants our soil is also polluted through our use of weedicides to remove weeds biological control of pests 
and diseases. In agriculture, there is a method of controlling pests that relies on a natural predation rather than introduced chemicals. A key belief of the organic farmer is that biodiversity furthers health. The more variety a landscape has, the more sustainable it is. The organic farmer therefore works to create a system where the insects that are sometimes called pests are not eradicated but instead are kept at manageable levels by a complex system of checks and balances within a living and vibrant ecosystem. Contrary to the conventional farming practices which often use chemical methods to kill both useful and harmful life forms indiscriminately, this is a holistic approach that seeks to develop an understanding of the webs of interaction between the myriad of organisms that constitute the field fauna and flora. The organic farmer holds the view that the eradication of the creatures that are often described as pests is not only possible but also undesirable. For without them, the beneficial predatory and parasitic insects which depend upon them as food or host would not be able to survive. Thus, the use of biocontrol measures will greatly reduce our dependence on toxic chemicals and pesticides. An important part of biological farming approach is to become familiar with various life forms that inhabit, it, inhabit the field, predators as well as pests, and also their life cycles, patterns of feeding, and the habitats they, that they prefer. This will help develop appropriate means of biocontrol. The very familiar beetle with red and black markings the ladybird and the dragonflies are useful to get rid of aphids and mosquitoes, respectively. An example of microbial control agents that can be introduced in order to control butterfly caterpillars is the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis, often referred to as Bt. These are available in sachet as dried spores which are mixed with water and sprayed onto vulnerable plants such as brassicas and fruit trees where these are eaten by insect larvae. In the gut of the larvae, the toxin is released and the larvae get killed. The bacterial disease will kill the caterpillars but leave other insects unharmed. Because of the development of of methods of genetic engineering in the last decade or so, the scientists have introduced B. thurinogenesis toxin genes into plants. Such plants are resistant to attack by insects, pests. Bt cotton is one such example which is being cultivated in some states of our country. You will learn more about this in chapter 12. A biological control being developed for use in treatment of plant diseases is the fungus Trichoderma. Trichoderma species are free-living fungi that are very common in the root ecosystem. They are effective biocontrol agents of several plant pathogens. Baculoviruses are pathogens that attack insects and other arthropods. The majority of baculoviruses used as biocontrol agents are in the genus Nucleopolyhedrovirus. These viruses are excellent candidates for species-specific narrow-spectrum insecticidal application. They have been shown to have no negative impacts on plants, mammals, birds, fish or even on non-target insects. This is especially desirable when beneficial insects are being conserved to aid in an overall integrated pest management IPM program or when an ecologically sensitive area is being treated. Microbes as biofertilizers With our present day lifestyles, environmental pollution is a major cause of concern. The use of chemical fertilizers to meet the ever-increasing demand of agriculture produce has contributed significantly to this pollution. Of course, we have now realized that there are problems associated with the overuse of chemical fertilizers and there is large pressure to switch to organic farming, the use of biofertilizers. 
Biofertilizers are organisms that enrich the nutrient quality of the soil. The main sources of biofertilizers are bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. You have studied about the nodules on the root of leguminous plants formed by the symbiotic association of rhizobium. These bacteria fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms which is used by plant as nutrient. Other bacteria can fix atmospheric nitrogen while free living in the soil. Examples are Azospirillium and Azetobacter, thus enriching the nitrogen content of the soil. Fungi are also known to form symbiotic association with plants, Mycorrhiza. Many members of the genus Glomus form Mycorrhiza. The fungal symbiont in these associations absorb phosphorus from soil and passes it to the plant. Plants having such association show other benefits also, such as resistant to rootborne pathogens, tolerance to salinity and rot, and an overall increase in plant growth and development. Can you tell what advantage of fungus derives from this association? Cyanobacteria are autotropic microbes widely distributed in aquatic and terrestrial environments, many of which can fix atmospheric nitrogen, example anabine, nostoc, oscillatoria, etc. In paddy fields, cyanobacteria serve as an important biofertilizer. Blue-green algae also add organic matter to the soil and increase its fertility. Currently, in our country, a number of biofertilizers are available commercially in the market and farmers use these regularly in their fields to replenish soil nutrients and to reduce dependence on chemical fertilizers. Summary Microbes are very important component of life on the earth. Not all microbes are pathogenic. Many microbes are very useful to human beings. We use microbes and microbially derived products almost every day. Bacteria called lactic acid bacteria lab grow in milk to convert it into curd. The dough which is used to make bread is fermented by yeast called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Certain diseases such as idli and dosa are made from dough fermented by microbes. Bacteria and fungi are used to impart particular texture, taste and flavor to cheese. Microbes are used to produce industrial products like lactic acid, acetic acid and alcohol, which are used in variety of processes in the industry. Antibiotics like penicillin, produced by useful microbes, are used to kill disease-causing harmful microbes. Antibiotics have played a major role in controlling infectious diseases like diphtheria, whooping cough and pneumonia. For more than a hundred years, microbes are being used to treat sewage, wastewater by the process of activated sludge formation and this helps in recycling of water in nature. Methanogens produce methane, that is biogas, while degrading plant waste. Biogas produced by microbes is used as a source of energy in rural areas. Microbes can, be, can also be used to kill harmful pests, a process called as biocontrol. The biocontrol measures help us to avoid heavy use of toxic pesticides for controlling pests. There is a need these days to push for use of biofertilizers in place of chemical fertilizers. It is clear from the diverse uses human beings have put microbes to that they play an important role in the welfare of human society. So here yeah, we complete the chapter microbes and human welfare. I hope you enjoyed the ch chapter. You enjoyed listening to the audio. So please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Keep studying. Bye bye.